What you're seeing isn't real. This is virtual production. Today, if you're not learning about virtual production, then you're getting left behind. Using Unreal Engine 5, anyone can create virtual environments that can be used on set, even you. But most people misunderstand why virtual production is such a powerful tool. By now, everyone accuses Marvel and other blockbusters of overusing green screen and visual effects. But the problem isn't visual effects or virtual production, it's how they're being used. Make no mistake, virtual production is the future of visual effects and filmmaking. That's why today I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes of the horror short film I made using virtual production and Unreal Engine 5. So if you wanna learn all the secrets and everything I've learned from using Unreal Engine on set, stick around to the end and I'll show you exactly how it's done. And this video is sponsored by me and Unreal Fundamentals. This is the playbook for creating real-time visual effects and films inside of Unreal Engine 5. We'll talk about that more later. What's up, my name's Josh Tunin, and for the last eight years I've worked as an artist and supervisor on Hollywood visual effects, on movies like Star Wars, Dungeons and Dragons, and Across the Spider-Verse. But last year I joined the virtual production team at Pixamundo and worked as an Unreal operator on set of the world's largest LED volume for Avatar The Last Airbender. Now what exactly is virtual production and why should you use it? Well, it was first used in The Mandalorian, and the concept is pretty simple. When filming on set, instead of using green screens and replacing them in post, what if we surrounded all the actors with the largest TV screen you've ever seen and turned these flat LED walls into 3D worlds? Virtual production is also known as in-camera visual effects because we're creating visual effects that'll all be shot through the camera lens. And this takes two different steps. The first step is building a virtual world and the bigger, the better. Instead of building a set in real life, we wanna build a digital set in the 3D world using Unreal Engine 5. Now a 3D environment can be cool, but to make it look perfect through the camera lens, the real magic happens when we start tracking the motion of the camera. We do this by adding a tracker to the top of any camera and using motion capture to track the exact 3D position and rotation of that camera so we can recreate it perfectly inside of Unreal. That way we can render our 3D world through the camera's perspective. And now we can move the camera left, right, up, or down and we'll get real 3D parallax and movement from the 3D world. I had the chance to work with a lot of different filmmakers and see all of their different approaches to virtual production. And I got to see what worked and what didn't. Sometimes the results were incredible. We're inventing these fantasy and sci-fi locations that you can never visit or recreate on a film set and get any shot, any angle and capture exactly what we need. So what worked the best for these huge, vast landscapes, whether it's a tundra or a desert or anywhere where you're seeing mountains and clouds off in the distance. And the other huge advantage is light interaction because we're literally surrounded by an LED wall. We can emit lights dynamically and interactively to light the characters on set. We use something called light cards, which are little discs that you can change the brightness or color and move them to any location around the volume to either add or subtract light and really shape the look and the lighting of the actors and characters. But it was strange, sometimes it looked completely photorealistic and other times it still looked like the old traditional way of shooting on a green screen. And I kept wondering why, what is this thing that separates great looking virtual production shoots from really amateur looking results? We've shot a lot of different environments, whether it's snowy or overcast or nighttime, but the most difficult one is during direct sunlight. And let me tell you why. There was one day we were shooting a daytime scene and the crew started putting up the lights and we realized, oh crap, the sun in our 3D environment was going right to left, but the sun on set was going left to right. So basically it looked like there were two suns going in opposite directions. We were scrambling around trying to find a way to fix this, but they were already loading the camera onto the crane. And before I knew it, they had already called action and I couldn't believe my eyes. I buried my head down. I didn't even want to look at the final result. But as I looked up, something incredible happened. The final shot actually looked real. Even though the lighting was wrong and the colors weren't perfect, it felt like a real place and the magic trick of virtual production still worked. But it didn't make any sense, so I had to understand why. And it was because they were moving the camera. By putting the camera onto a crane and translating it through the 3D world, we got all of the motion, movement, and parallax of the real 3D world, and that movement and parallax made the virtual set feel completely real. So the biggest mistake I see with people approaching virtual production is not moving your camera. And you don't need a big budget techno crane or steady cam. All you need is handheld movement and translating the camera through the 3D world. 
So if you want the best looking shots, you have to move your camera if you're shooting for virtual production. By the end of this shoot, I was dying to take all of the lessons I had learned and try to push the boundaries of virtual production and make something impossible that had never been seen before using these techniques by creating our own virtual production horror film using Unreal Engine 5. Without spoiling the ending, it's about a family of ghost hunters who locks away these different spirits that they catch along the way and this never ending labyrinth of hallways and doors so nothing can ever escape. So I wanted to make this in Unreal Engine 5 using my three biggest takeaways, creating impossible locations with light interaction and lots of camera movement. Here's exactly how we built it. So let's dive in. When building this in Unreal 5, the only thing that mattered, the number one rule, was create something that could never exist in real life. To take advantage of virtual production, I wanted to make something that you could only do on a virtual production stage. So I want to create different animations and movements in the environment itself that you can never pull off in real life. So to start off, we built this first hallway with different rooms where the spirits would be locked away. And we wanted to tell a story with each one of these rooms. So to test all these things at once, the first room we built is the burning room. And this is a lot simpler than you might think. I first took some live action footage of fire and brought this into Unreal. That way I knew it would look photorealistic right away. And then behind that, we added these looping animations of these zombies attacking this door. This is actually just repurposing a shot from the Last of Us film we created, where I found the stock footage of hands slamming on this door, and we turned this into a looping animation and just brought this into Unreal. By combining the two together, we got this impossible looking looping animation with interacting light and fire, creating something we could never do safely on a real movie set. And you wanna know the coolest part? It's the light interaction. By taking this real life footage and making it really, really bright inside of Unreal, we get true to life lighting by casting all of this fire onto Nick here. And this made the illusion feel really grounded and true to life. We wanted all the doors to be stacked right next to one another, but we wanted to find ways to cheat the depth and parallax between each one of these rooms. So I used a technique called parallax mapping to add a bunch of depth into these small cramped rooms. And by cheating around with the material itself, we can add in that depth and parallax without building any geometry. I also wanted to add in creatures. Like I said, there's gotta be demons and other characters hidden inside this world. And I wanted to make something simple but effective. With creature effects, a lot of times I find that seeing all of the nitty gritty details doesn't actually make things that scary. Sometimes just seeing the silhouettes and the eyes poking through the darkness can feel a lot scarier than seeing all the different details and parts of the costume. So I really embraced this and sketched out a really simple silhouette of this demon and built out this long corridor so I could add depth into this hallway, but have a really simple composition when we peek into this room for the first time. Then I took a couple Quixel assets and scattered them around the scene. And this was already feeling really nice when we added in this creepy red lighting. Then we put it all together and brought it on set. From there, we didn't use expensive cinema grade cameras. I just took my Blackmagic pocket cinema camera and then we mounted the camera tracker on top. Then we took turns to find different angles and shots and literally started playing with fire, moving our camera along the hallway to get a lot of parallax and 3D movement. Usually virtual production is just extending the background behind the actor, but I wanted to see if we could extend the virtual set into the foreground in front of the actor. What if the hallway could extend close to the camera? Or what if we could just walk into any of these rooms? We had to try it out and the results speak for themselves. As long as your camera is just looking at the LED volume, you can intersect through the different parts of your virtual world and create these really cool illusions of walking through these virtual sets. And even though it looks like we're right next to these walls in the virtual set, the LED wall is actually 20 feet behind Nick here. And we went one step further and added defocus to the camera inside of Unreal. So the virtual set in the foreground was actually out of focus. And using these techniques, we could be fully immersed and surrounded by our virtual set. This was cool, but I wondered how could we crank this to 11? How could we get more animation, more movement, more light interaction, and really start pushing the boundaries and make something that I've never seen before in virtual production? What if we could start animating and warping the set in impossible ways that you can never do in real life? What if we could take each module of this hallway and start twisting it and turning it deep into the background? That was cool, but that was just the beginning. 
Then I thought, what if we could add lights that are passing through quickly and adding movement and intensity to this hallway? So I built a really simple blueprint inside of Unreal, so I had full animation control of each one of these modules and the speed of lights passing through the hallway. Then I could take this blueprint and add it into Sequencer so I could start animating this and transforming it in front of our eyes. And it worked perfectly when we brought it on set. But I didn't want to stop there. I wanted to make sure that this light passing through the hallway would have a huge effect as it passes over our characters. To push the light interaction even further, once we saw the whole environment animated on set, I realized that we could actually add in those light cards and start animating the light cards to travel overhead and get extra parallax and movement from the lighting itself, not just the camera. And then lastly, when we added in that handheld camera movement, the entire scene started to come to life. And the coolest part, why virtual production is such a unique tool, is that we can change the speed, animation, and lighting all dynamically in front of us on set until we have the perfect image into one believable sequence. Finally creating in-camera visual effects. If you want to start creating your own cinematics and films using Unreal Engine 5, then check out our new Unreal 5 Crash Course. You'll learn how to make films in Unreal 5 completely for free, the best resources for free characters, free environments, and free animations, so you can create your own films without knowing how to model, how to code, or how to animate. This is a small part of our 21-day Unreal Filmmaking Bootcamp, Unreal Fundamentals. You can get started today by checking out the Crash Course over at unrealforvfx.com slash crash course. And I'll give you a complete roadmap of all the steps and skills that you need to learn to start creating your own films inside of Unreal Engine 5. And I'll even walk through all the different career paths so you know exactly what to do step by step to start your own career in environments, previs, or working on set. Sound cool? We'll go over to unrealforvfx.com slash crash course and get started today. And make sure to subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 filmmaking and behind the scenes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.